thing that I use actions for heavily is drill through and drill down. So, you know, you're not going to end up having this one single massive report. What we'll often end up with in an organization is the user comes in and they'll start at a dashboard. You know what a dashboard looks like, right? It's like lots of little sub reports that are summarized, okay? And then they'll generally drill through from the dashboard into the areas that they need. That's a very, uh, I think, a fairly typical way that your normal executive would interface with a reporting application. Not required. You might have a standard application, and then there's a reports section, and you can just go to detail reports directly from there. I, I don't know. There's thousands of ways to have created the interface to the reports. However, what you want to do, you want to be able to link from one report to another, right? So you want to create links in between them. Okay, well, these are what your actions are going to do. So, uh, like, for example, let's create, um, tell you what, I'm going to start with SQL on this one, the actual query. And so, uh, let's, let's do this. So, show sales for a particular product. So, the SQL on this one would be something like this. Um, uh, I think these are in the 700s. Okay, right. So, like, for this particular product, it turns out there were seven sales, and this, if we were to summarize it, that would give us the overall amount of money that we've made from that particular product, right? But we can see the details along with it. Okay. And if we change this to like 900, we can see that product 900 only has two sales. Okay, So fairly easy. This is kind of like a child report, right? What would be the parent to this query? The query that then told us what, you know, things like the product name, who manufactured the product, right? So it's kind of like a parent-child relationship. So we might say, and I'm using select asterisk, and generally in the real world you'd be a little more uh, declarative with what you wanted, but uh, you know I'm trying to teach you reporting services, not writing queries, so please forgive. Um, where product ID equals 900, and that gives us the parent information. Here's the name of the product, the color, the cost, and then this is the child information down here, all of the sales of that product. So many times when you're working with child and parent relationships, you have a parent report that shows the list of parents, the list of customers in an address book, for example, the list of uh, products in a catalog in a report. And then there's a drill through. There, there's a link that allows you to show sales or a link that shows the tickets opened by a particular customer or a particular agent. Okay, So that's what we want to set up for our report. So I want to go back over here to Report Builder. And I'm going to open up my report template, and I'm going to call this um, sales for product. Okay. Now, I am designing first the child form. I could do it backwards. I could do the parent and then design the child. But I am designing the most nested, the deepest member of my hierarchy, the thing that I want to link to. Okay, so I'm designing the sub-report if you want to think of it like that. Not technically a sub-report. Okay. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new uh, data source, hook it up to my production server, and I'm going to make a new data set, and this is just going to be called order history. And you know, I'm keeping it simple. We're going to make this a parameterized data set. So you could take a look at it right here. Okay, there's our query. Give me all the detail information for a given product. And behind the scenes, when we say OK, it's going to create the report parameter that you see right here. It creates the product ID. Okay. Now I'm going to drag my table over here. And we'll put in a couple of extra columns just to make sure I get all the goodies we want to see. The uh, product ID, the order ID, the quantity, the total, 
whatever. Um, let's make these guys that, and we'll make their background color that, and you. Let's make you guys all in the center, and this guy here is going to be a number. So we'll go to the text box, say it's a number and it's currency. Um, what else? I think that's probably good enough. And so we made this a parameter, right? But we didn't define a default and we didn't provide a list of different products. Okay? So when we run this, it says which product ID 707. And it says, okay, there's the sales for that particular product. We change it up here to 900. Does it? Cool. I, you know, the only other little gotcha over here, we changed this for this particular product where there is no sale. Wouldn't we, I, I think I would want it to be a little more usable to the end user and have it say there are no sales for this product, right? So you definitely want to be able to do that. So you actually go to your tablets' properties right here and down towards the bottom when it says no rows, uh, right here in the no rows section, the no rows message, okay, we can define it with an expression or there are no sales for this product. And you can set your color and you know, often red would come into play there and set it to be bold. And so now we run it again and we choose like uh, 707 comes back with our normal report, um, but 706, which I don't think has any uh, things. There you go. There are no sales for this product. And you could put borders and images and whatever you wanted in there. Uh, there's a whole no rows block for defining that information. Okay. I need to save this. So I'm going to save this in my report server. I'm just going to save it on the root and I'll call it, um, what did I call it? Sales by product. Okay. Done with that one. I'm going to open up a template and we're going to call this uh, product catalog. And I'm probably, uh, I probably misspelled catalog depending on what part of the world you're in. <laughs> I know it's spelled differently across the world. Uh, so over here, I'm going to make a data source to production, which is my saved data source, my shared data source. And my data set this time is going to be the products. So let's just get the product information. Okay. There we go. Generic query. And no parameters. Just grab myself a little table, put it over here. Grab whatever and et cetera and blah and set whatever colors you want and you know, make it look decent. It'd be nice. I'm I'm sure in SQL two thousand thirteen or whatever the next version is, eventually we've got to get table styles like you have in Excel. Move those guys out of the way and put you guys like that. And name's going to be a little wider than probably color and certainly ID. So I bet we need to kind of manipulate that just a wee bit. Okay. Now, at this point, there is no relationship between that prior report we did and this report. But what we want to have wired up is we want to have a link, either a separate column over here or a link through the product ID or through the name to where we can link to see the sales. I know it took us a long time to get here, but that's what we're kind of talking about here. So I could do it either way. I can come over here. I can make the product ID. Uh, linkable or I can add a new column over here and I can say uh, view sales and I can just put like the text link right there and then right here I can go to my properties and I can go to the action right here so I've got the selected text I go to my action and I tell it that I want to go to a report and I specify the report and look, it's our standard browser that's browsing our report server, and there is sales by product. Now, sales by product has a parameter. 
Remember, we've got the product ID parameter, right? Okay, so when I click Add, what reporting services, or rather Report Builder is going to do, is it's going to look in this report, and it says, what are the report parameters? What are the public parameters? In other words, okay, that was an important thing I just said. Which parameters are not marked as hidden or internal? Which parameters are marked as visible? Because those are the ones that we can set. We cannot set hidden or internal ones right here. So we, well, we can set the hidden ones, but we have to know what they are. So it reads that there is a product ID, and we can set the value to be the product ID from the data set. So let's discern what's happening here. This, oh, sorry, this is the parameter from the child report that we are linking to. Okay. Uh, in other words, uh, these parameters do not come from the report we are designing. They come from the report we just linked to. Okay. Now this over here, let's change colors, this is the fields in this report. So what we're saying is that the value of this row's product ID will be passed in as the value to the product ID parameter in this child slash sub report. Okay. All right. So we say, okay, let's go ahead and save this uh, as, uh, oops, I have to save it as, I have that report template marked as read only so that you can't save over it and the error message you get is hey uh, access is denied it's a pretty bad message but you just need to save it back to your report server uh, as product catalog catalog okay. run our report and notice now that the link is wired up. And how do I know it's wired up? Because the cursor changes. Right? Unfortunately though I didn't colorize it so I'd come back over here. Uh, I would come back to the color and say okay let's do some best practices here. Uh, let's underline this guy. Okay. There we go. Another thing that I like to do just in these reports, I don't know that that we've really talked too much about it. I like to center the text vertically. Notice you can bring it to the bottom, the middle, or the top. I like it more centered uh, vertically. Uh, so there we go. Um, we've got our links now. And so when we click through, it's going to launch that other report, and it's going to pass 680 as the product ID over to that other report and populate that product ID. And so here is the sales for product. You can see that it pre-populated the product ID. And because there were no sales, that's what it tells us down there. Now I find it a little tricky in the little report builder to get back. You can do two things. There's a little back button right there. Or you can right click and go back. And so now you can go to product 707, which I know has some sales, and we can now click through it like that. Right? So that's your report actions. It's actually fairly simple to click from one report to another. This is how you create reports that are really tied together nicely. This is how you uh, make it more usable for people to just jump in, bam, 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 get the information that they need. I think you'll make a lot of use out of these.